What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I want to talk about the SQLite database for Python. All right, in the last video, we looked at creating our own modules. In this video, I want to talk about using the SQLite database for Python. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so this is going to be a very, very quick video on database stuff with Python, specifically SQLite, which is a sort of lightweight database that's really good for like hobby projects, little personal projects, you know, little side projects, or sort of development for bigger projects, you know, uh, getting things right on the development side, and then maybe pushing to a bigger database for production, but you know, good for testing and things like that. So one thing that people don't realize is that the SQLite database comes with Python, it's already installed, there's nothing to install, there's nothing to download, there's nothing to configure, it's there, you can use it anytime you want just by importing the SQLite module um, at the top of your file. So fantastically easy and uh, really kind of cool. And most people don't even realize that. So uh, the first thing we want to do is just come up here and I'm just in uh, our hello.py file. And we just want to, well, let's do it up above here, import and it's just SQLite 3. Three is the current version of SQLite. So that's it. That's all you have to do in order to start using this thing. So in this video, I'm just going to run through very, very quickly some very basic stuff. I have an entire course on SQLite with Python at Codemy.com. Uh, the course is 29 bucks, or you can get it for free if you join as a total member, which with the coupon code only costs $27. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. So the first thing we do is we've got the database, we need to like connect to it. It's in the background already, we've imported it, but we need to connect to it. So you always want to create a connection and I'm just gonna create a variable. It, you can call it anything you want, but it's a connection. So I'm gonna name it con, short for connection. Kind of makes sense. And we just go SQLite3.connect. And then we can pass in the name of the database that we want to connect to. Now I'm gonna call customer.db. Now, uh, this doesn't exist yet, we haven't created it. But if Python tries to connect to a database that doesn't exist, it will automatically create it for us. So we don't have to have to actually create the database. Uh, it'll do it for us if we just name it like this. So this will create the database in the same directory you're in. So we're in, I think, what is it C slash Python stuff. So inside of that directory, it'll create that database. Very cool, very easy. So that's step one. Now, sort of the next thing that you want to do is create a cursor. And a cursor, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like the thing that goes and does stuff. Like you, you send it off and you do stuff on the database. So if you want to make a query to the database, you send your cursor off to, to do that, basically, I guess. <laughs> so you, again, we just create a variable. And we call it anything you want, but it's a cursor. So instead of typing out cursor, because anytime you ever want to do something, you do it through this cursor. So I don't want to type out the word cursor 100 times. So I'm just going to type C instead, a little easier. So we want to call our con variable. This is a this is now like an instance of our database that's running. And we can do stuff on that instance, right? Object oriented stuff. So we want to create a cursor. And then that's it. So now we have this cursor and let's sort of um, connect to the database and then create a cursor. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do obviously is create a table. So if you're familiar with databases, you know the database doesn't really do anything. It's the table inside of the database that holds all the data. If you want to pull stuff out of your database, you query the table inside the database. The database is just the, the wrapper. Uh, the table is where all the stuff is. And a table is just like an Excel spreadsheet. It has rows and columns. And that's all it is. That's all a database really is just a series of tables 
that have rows and columns of data. So to create a table, we want to, well, I should mention first, let's just go down here. Let's go close database connection. So you always want to just sort of um, close your connection. You know, up here we created the connection. Um, here we want to close it. Now, once your file gets executed, it'll close automatically, but it's just best practices to sort of manually close it just to make sure. I don't know that you really need to, but it's best, best practices, so we do. So anyway, back to creating a table. Very quickly, we just go c.execute, and almost always when you do something with your cursor, you're executing something. You're executing a query. You're executing a this. You're executing a that, whatever. So you're always going to execute your, your cursor. So now we want to uh, use some SQL, SQL structured query language. It's the language of databases. If you're familiar with that, if you're not, I've got a course on that at Codemy. You can check that out. But to create a table, there's a couple of ways to do it. And I'm going to use this doc string method. And a doc string is just three opening and closing quotation marks. And this allows us to um, do stuff on many lines, right? And since we're building a table and there's multiple lines of stuff, it's a good idea to use doc strings. Otherwise, you could just use single quotes, but then you have to do it all on one line, and it's really hard to read all that. So I'm going to use the doc strings. It's just the, the Python documentation suggests you do that anyway. So um, three quotation marks. Now we want to create a table. And if you're familiar with SQL, you, this looks familiar to you. And now we want to name it. Now let's call it our customers table. Call it whatever you want. Now inside of these parentheses, we want to um, define the row, the columns of our table, right? So let's say we want a first name, and we want that to be text. We want a last name. We want that to be text. And we want, let's say, an age. Ah, eh, let's go email. And we want that to be text. Right. So we can sort of do this to make it all nice. So those uh, these things right here, text, text and text, those are data types. And anytime you have a column in a database, you have to define the data type it is. And we're just using text. Now, SQLite 3, SQLite has only five uh, data types, which is really nice. And they are text, they are integer, they are, I want to say real for decimals, like 1995, that's a real number versus the integer, which is like 10, 2, 57, you know, whole numbers. So text, integer, real, blob, which is like images and wave files and stuff like that, MP3s, those are blobs. And then uh, Boolean, I think, true, false. No, no, not Boolean, null. Null or not null. So null means does it exist or not. So those are the only five data types that come with uh, SQL. So it's really easy to use and, and very cool. So now we've got our cursor. We've got our executed thing. Um, but it hasn't actually happened yet. The, you know, to actually send the cursor out to do what you want, you have to commit your stuff to the database. If you're familiar with databases, you always commit stuff into the database. Doesn't matter if you're using Ruby on Rails or Django or anything. When you make a change to the database, you commit that change to the database. So we want to con.commit. And then when we do that, um, uh, it'll actually execute this thing. So let's uh, uh, create table here. And then here, let's go um, commit changes, whatever. Okay, so if we save this and now come over here to our terminal and run this, you see nothing looks like it has happened. But now if we ls, we can see that this customer.db file has been created. And uh, that's kind of cool. So now there's not really anything in there yet. So let's really quickly execute um, one thing and I'm just going to well, let's just get rid of this. Well, no, let's let's comment this out. Boom. 
All right, so now we want to insert data into our new table. To do that, we go c.execute, like always. And then I'm gonna use the single quotes this time because we're just gonna do one line of stuff and there's not a whole lot of stuff to put in there. So we wanna insert into and then customer. Um, let's see, do we really wanna call this customer? I probably would have named this customers but we've already gone and done it. So we'll just leave it like this. Um, so customer, <laughs> right? Kind of weird, right? Whatever. So now we want to insert the values of what? Well, there's three fields here, three columns, first name, last name, and email. So we need to put, pass in three things here. And we separate those with single quotes. So I'll just do that, separated by commas. So we don't wanna use double quotes because these double quotes already exist, right? So we need to use single quotes. So let's pass in John, pass in Elder, and then pass in what? John at codemy.com, right? So again, we need to commit this. So if we save this and run it, again, it looks like nothing has happened, but it, it has. now. If you wanted to get fancy and just print something onto the screen, you know, you could just go print, uh, you know, uh, data added to table or whatever. So a little, you know, print something on the screen so it seems like you've done something, uh, but we really don't care for this uh, exercise here. Okay, so now we want to pull the data that we've put in there out, right? So to do that, we go c.execute again, because we're always executing, right? So we want to select, and let's select everything, absolutely everything that's in our table. Now we've only got one record, so whatever, but normally you have more than one. So the star means select everything. And we want to select it from customer, the name of our table, right? So now this will sort of, uh, it will work, right? And we can commit that, but it doesn't really do anything on the screen. To do that, we have to actually use something called fetch. And so you can either fetch one, you can fetch many, and then say, I wanna fetch eight records, right? or you can fetch all. Now, we only have rec we only have one record. So, you know, you would probably say fetch one, but in this case I'm just going to say fetch all, right? Now, this will fetch that, right? But again, it won't put it on the screen. So, we have to wrap this whole thing in parentheses. So, if we save this, head back over here and run it. Boom, we get this nice listy looking thing with it looks like a tuple inside with our record. Very cool. Now, we can access this in more user friendly manner um, by since it is a tuple, we could say pull the zero with item, right? So if we save this and run it, it prints out just that tuple. Now inside of that, we can again pull the zero with item. Now, you know, normally there'd be more than one tuple, more than one record. So uh, that's why it's only printing one thing on the screen. So we only have one. So let's pull this back up. And now, boom, it's going to just print out John. So that's one way to access the stuff inside of there. Another sort of very quick way would be to just use a for loop of some sort. So we can go, what? Instead of printing all of this, let's set it equal to a variable. And I'm gonna call this items, because it's the items in our table. And then we could just use a for loop, for item in items, oops, and then just print item, right? I wanna wrap these, there we go, boom. So if we save this and run it, we're gonna get a much nicer sort of thing, sort of, right? But then we could pull out specific things from there just like we did last time. So we could print item and then the zero with item, right? So if we save this and run this, it's again, it's gonna print out John. Now, 
this isn't very, very cool because we only have one um, sort of thing, one record in our database. But if we had more than one, it would put on each line, you know, John, Bob, Tim, Mary, whatever. Uh, we could concatenate here, put some space, and then do item, oops, the first item. Close our parentheses, save this. Now we get John Elder. Oops. What did I do? Oh, we need to concatenate again. Boom. There we go. Save that. Now run it. We get John Elder. So very cool. And again, if you have more records, it'll loop through and print out each, you know, first and last name of each record on its own line. So I think we'll stop there for this video. Uh, there's a whole lot of other stuff you could learn about this stuff. And maybe in the next video, I'll, I'll do a little bit more. Or probably I'll just point you towards my codemy.com website. There'll be a link in the description below uh, where you can take this course for almost no money. So <laughs> you might as well just do that instead. Um, but if a lot of people comment, they want to learn more, maybe I'll add a little bit more to this video tomorrow. But those are the basics uh, for using a database with Python and just super, super easy. I mean, I really sped through this because we don't have a lot of time in this video, but it's, it's really nice and easy to use. Like I said, great for hobby projects, small projects where you just need to do a little bit of database stuff and built right into Python. There's nothing to install. You know, MySQL's pretty easy to use, but you got to download it, you got to install it. That's a hassle. Same thing with Postgres, same thing with, you know, Mongo, everything. It's really nice to have this little database just built right into Python. And most people don't even realize it's there and uh, totally free to use and, and great. So very, very cool. And uh, I definitely recommend learning more about this if you're interested. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube you get $22 off membership, so you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com. We'll see you again in the next video.